Hello and welcome back to the new session of NPTEL course Canning Technology and Value Addition of Seafoods. And in the last classes, we have seen about composition and nutritional quality of seafoods. We have also seen the muscle structure in fish and uh, the spoilages that are common to seafoods and what are the different preservation techniques in brief uh, that can be adopted to increase the shelf life and retain the nutritional quality and uh, thereby prevent the spoilage. And in today's session, we are going to discuss about the value addition, not only in the thermally processed foods, but generally, in generally, what are the different value added products that can be prepared. So before we uh, go into the value addition, there are three questions one has to ask. Why value addition is important? What do you mean by value addition and how to do the value addition? So let's address these questions. First one is what is value addition? Value addition means adding value to something. So why we add value by employing some processing methods, we can add value. So adding value to something means, for example, in the case of canning, we, what we have been learning, a lot of byproducts are produced from the canning industry. So these byproducts, instead of just uh, dumping them, we can utilize them to develop some value added products. We can utilize them to extract some value added products, or we can convert it into some other forms that will be beneficial to human beings or to animals. So it can be given as rather than dumping it, wasting it, we extract and we utilize it properly. And by this means, we are reducing the waste and which will also have less impact on the environment. And how we do value addition, we add specialized ingredients. Uh, sometimes it is adding ingredients to it or you can extract a particular compound. For example, if you feel that it is rich in some one particular compound, you can extract it, use a suitable method to extract this compound. You can also pack it, uh, give a nice packing, which will enhance the nutrition quality. For example, fish products, they might be lacking in one particular component and you can add some innovation. That is, you can add some other biotic components which are extracted from other sources and which will increase the nutritional quality of the fish. That is one way of value addition. So uh, when you do value addition, it increases the sensory qualities, but it also increases the shelf stability of the product and it makes the food product convenient. That is, you can eat it immediately. That is, there are two types, ready to serve and ready to eat. Ready to eat, you can eat immediately. You don't have to process it, but ready to serve, it has to be processed and then served. So that is another way of value addition. And why value addition is done? Nowadays, we find that consumers in a household, if you look at a home, uh, even the both the parents, they might be working. So there might be time constraints where they cannot prepare food. So in such cases, if they get uh, ready to serve or ready to cook food or value added products, they don't have to cook it. They don't have to spend time on cooking or washing or cleaning or doing some other processing techniques. So this is one reason why we go for value addition that is increase convenience to consumers. So they can just take the product, they can utilize it as uh, mentioned on the label. Then another reason why we go for value addition is increasing the shelf life. If for example, if you are pickling, you can add spices and other ingredients to it and you can increase the shelf life of the product. And it can be utilized in off seasons or it can also be transported to different places where it is not available. For example, in Kerala, we have uh, jackfruits and this is the season for jackfruit. But there are times when we don't get jackfruit and if we process the jackfruit, uh, we can say utilize it later. And also we can uh, export it to other countries where jackfruit loving people are there. So that is one reason why we can do value addition. Then another reason is increasing the flavor uh, diversity. So generally, there might be one or two ways of uh, improving the flavor. but if we do value addition, the flavors can be improved many times. So different kinds of products can be developed. So that is another reason. And also it should be cost effective. Eventually purchasing power of the consumer that determines the marketability or market uh, scenario. So if, if we produce a product, it has to be purchased by the consumer and it should be cost effective for consumers to purchase. So all these criteria need to be considered when we do value addition and ways of value addition, how we do value addition. Before we go for value addition, we have to understand the market. What is the demand from the market? What kind of products will be marketable, which will be 
given importance. So if you are developing a product and it cannot be marketed, then it is not a validation. Even though it, it will limit to the research level, it will not go to the field. So we have to develop products which will go to the market and which will be utilized by the consumers. And also, what are the different methods uh, of uh, doing value addition? Uh, one particular method of value addition is not sufficient. We have to try out different methods and see which is the most suitable one and which is more appreciated by the consumer or the market. So that is also. Also, how innovative it is. We cannot repeat the same method uh, doing drying and selling it to the market. It doesn't make any change to the product. It is the same conventional technique that we are adopting. So what is the innovative method you are going to add to it? What is the innovation that you are going to add? That is also very important when validation is being done. So let's see different value added products or the byproducts from the industry. Uh, we have shark fins, rays, cartilage, fish extract, fish entails. And fish entails they, or fish extract, most of the time they go as pet foods or animal feeds. And we also have non-food byproducts from the seafood industry, which includes fish uh, body oil or liver oil. We have fish glue, which is highly water resistant. Then we have fish leather. Uh, it is replacing the animal leather. We also have artificial pearls and then uh, pharmaceutical and biochemical products, fish albumin, swim bladder and fertilizer and fish silage. Now let's uh, look into products, fish oil and shark liver oil. In the previous sessions, we had seen that the uh, liver is the main organ where the oil is or the fats are deposited. And in fatty fish, uh, muscle tissue is the main organ or main tissue where you can see the deposits of oil. And these oils are rich in uh, omega-3 fatty acids and therefore they have a lot of health benefits. And the muscle tissue of the underutilized fish or the liver of the sharks, they can be used to extract these oils that can be consumed in different forms and in the market we often see capsules of omega-3 fatty acids. Cod liver oil is a very common fish oil that is seen in the form of capsules and some of the oils which are not to the consumable level it can be sold for industrial purposes and as paints or mixes in lubricants. Generally the oil content in the fish is 1 to 20 percent and the liver contains around 20 to 65 percent of the oil. So instead of wasting the liver or the tissues which are not utilized by the industry, we can utilize these parts to extract the oils. And to extract these oils, we can go for wet rendering method. And in this process, we are just cooking the product that is steam cooking and squeezing it out, applying pressure and uh, we get press liquor and the residue. A residue can be is also called as a press cake and it can be sold as feed and uh, the press liquor it is allowed to clarify and uh, we get uh, fish oil because it's less denser it's uh, it floats on the surface and the fish oil can be collected and the liquid which is collected it contains high amounts of soluble fish solubles and it is called the stick water it can be concentrated and used for other purposes we also have a dry rendering method in the drying rendering method we go for solvent extraction method or use hydraulic press it's highly expensive so often uh, for commercial purposes, when rendering method is more suitable. And after once the fish oil has been separated, it contains a lot of uh, glycerides. It also contains fatty acids. So these things need to be removed. And this process is called refining. Refining can be done by five steps. That is first step is winterization, which is also called cold clearing. So the name suggests that uh, the temperature is brought down. And here in this process, we are bringing the temperature to 5 degrees centigrade, which precipitates the glycerides. So this helps in clearing it. The second step in refining is gravity settling. So the oil is mixed with uh, salts at high temperature and uh, the temperature is raised by inducing or blowing uh, moist steam into the oil. And this allows uh, emulsion to be formed and which settles down under gravity. Again, alkali refining, it is equivalent to saponification where soap formation is the main method. So you add high amount of alkali which interacts or reacts with the free fatty acids and soap is formed which can be removed again. Then bleaching is another method which helps in decolorizing. So fuller's earth or activated charcoal can be used and then the activated charcoal it can be washed and reused. So it traps all the coloring compounds like carotenoids which are present in the oil and it makes it colorless. 
and deodorization is the last step in refining and it, it includes stripping, sparging or steam into the oil so that uh, volatile odors are removed. So these uh, refining steps it is common for other oil extraction processes also whether it is from the plant sources or other sources oil seeds. So the refining processes are same. Now liver oil uh, we go for direct steaming we can also go for indirect steaming. In direct steaming the steam is directly or it is cooked directly at high temperature and uh, which causes the rupture of cells. Whereas uh, in case of indirect steaming, it, there is no direct contact between the tissue and the steam. So it is packed in a double jacketed kettle which heats up the uh, kettle and from the cells the oil is extracted. So in the direct steaming method, uh, since it ruptures the cells, the oil it comes out, it is suspended in the solids along with the moisture and then we centrifuge it and allow the solid heavier particles to settle down. On the supernatin, oils are collected and these are separated out. And uh, in, in case of indirect steaming method, we can go for mechanical methods also. We can, or we can employ the same method as being employed in the direct steaming method. Sometimes we also go for alkali digestion. Here alkaline solution is added and uh, sodium bicarbonate or sodium hydroxide is added which makes the sample alkaline or it, it uh, helps in extracting the oil and this is maintained at 80 to 87 degrees centigrade and then a digested liquor is collected and uh, oil is separated from this. There are also acid digestion method. In acid digestion method the instead of uh, alkaline or making it alkaline we are reducing the pH we are making it acidic and this is done under constant stirring so that the, there is no burning or charring out and then oil is extracted after centrifugation. We can also employ enzyme alkali digestion. In the previous method we have seen that alkali is being used. We can also use enzyme. The combination of enzyme and alkali can be used to extract the liver oil and uh, here in this case uh, papain is used and papain it is active at acidic pH so we reduce the pH of the slurry and the liver is ground and it is converted to slurry and the pH is reduced using HCl and then papain is added and it is allowed to digest the tissues and uh, or hydrolyze it and then it is made alkaline using sodium carbonate and when you add sodium carbonate uh, the pH increases so it becomes alkaline. In that condition it is digested for one hour at 80 degrees centigrade and oils are separated after centrifugation. So these are the different methods of extraction from the liver and we have fish silage that is uh, fish silage it goes into the market as feed or uh, it also goes as a fertilizer. So in uh, generally it can be liquid or semi-solid. So the fish waste products which are generally thrown they are collected they are ground and mixed and then to this the formic acid is added. After adding formic acid it is allowed to digest and the liquefaction happens and after liquefaction the oils are separated and the liquid is separated or the moisture content is separated by evaporation. So the concentrated content or the concentrated product that is obtained in the end is called fish silage and fish silage it can be sold in the liquid form or it can be sold in the semi-solid form and enzymes degrade the proteins and these proteins are converted to smaller uh, units and also these are resistant to bacterial spoilage. The third product we uh, very commonly produce using the shell is chitin and chitosan. Commercially we are using shrimp shell. Crab shells are also used for uh, producing chitin and chitosan. We also find chitin and chitosan in the cell walls of fungus but it is uh, in minute amount. Uh, the pens and the cuttle bones are, are also rich in uh, chitin and chitosan and they have very unique structure and because of that they are important in biomedicine, they are also important in drug delivery and uh, in wound healing. They are used in cosmetics and other uh, purifying methods for water purification. They also e exhibit antimicrobial properties. And this is the structure of chitin that is the basic structure. The chitin is obtained uh, from the shell after demineralization and deproteinization. Uh, the proteins are removed and the minerals are, are also removed and the material with the obtained is chitin. It is not soluble in water. The solubility is increased by deacetylating it and uh, usually anything uh, deacetylation above 50 it is soluble in water. So as the deacetylation increases it, it is more and more soluble and this the product is called chitosan. 
and next product is fish sausage in the fish sausage uh, the meat is taken and it is the other ingredients are added like salt sugar starch uh, starch is a binder here and we also add other ingredients like uh, fat spices and these are packed in synthetic casings and they are sealed boiled and cooled and uh, fish sausage is a readily available source of protein uh, and it can be eaten as such or it can be cooked and eaten so generally it has a shelf life of two weeks at room temperature but it can be extended to 14 weeks uh, in the refrigerated conditions and fish sausage uh, you can use fish as such alone or you can use pork uh, in combination with pork or in combination with beef and chicken usually the usual ones are in combination with pork and this is the protocol for preparing fish sausage so it is uh, the fish is taken it is clean and the white uh, meat is collected and uh, we can also use uh, red meat and then it is ground and mixed with pork fat and stuffed into the casings and thermal processed and packed so it generally contains 2.5 uh, percent salt and we can also do value addition by adding uh, vitamin c which will reduce the oxidative rancidity and uh, commercial sausages it contain pork meat or it contains porcine gelatin and uh, the other sausages can be liver sausage and blood sausage advantages of converting uh, the underutilized part into uh, sausages are because they are readily available source of protein they are healthy and they do not contain excess oil and other ingredients they are cheap easy to process and all varieties can be used uh, the disadvantage is that we are adding other meats so it is not always fish alone and uh, it also contains other fillers like starch, soya protein, carrageenan and myoglobin is absent so it doesn't have any uh, pink color of, or red color of it, its own. So you can uh, get the myoglobin or the red color by adding other meats and major disadvantage of uh, fish sausage is that it has fishy odor and it is very difficult to remove this fishy odor. It can be removed but then we have to increase the amount of other meats. So that is the uh, disadvantages and then uh, sausages can be of uh, ready to eat not ready to eat types and uh, ready to eat they are cooked uh, or fermented so they can be consumed you don't need to process it further but then not ready to eat they need to be cooked or they need to be boiled or they need to be steamed uh, before consumption. Then uh, next uh, byproduct is fish protein concentrate and fish protein concentrate is also called uh, fish powder and it contains a very little amount of fat and fish protein concentrated they are of three types type a which is of high quality and it is meant for human consumption and usually solvents are used to remove the lipids and it has only 0.05 to 0.75 percent lipid as the concentration of lipid increases the grade of fish protein also comes down and fish protein concentrate uh, b and c they have high amounts of fatty acids and since they have high amounts of fatty acids they are prone to rancidity and therefore they are meant mainly for animal consumption or they are given as animal feed and usually they, the fish protein concentrate they have a shelf life of three to four years and these are rich in protein of course as the names goes it is rich in protein it is a concentrated protein but it also contains lysine and minerals the recommended level is 35 grams per day but we also find applications of uh, fish protein in breads uh, so they sometimes they add 5 to 10 percentage of fish protein concentrate in breads and biscuits if it is added they will, of course it will be labeled in the nutritional label and fish meal is also another product important value added product uh, derived from the uh, underutilized parts of the fish industry the products which are obtained they are dried and ground and these are generally underutilized fish or the waste obtained from the fish industry and uh, fish meal from white fish they contain um, below 6% of oil and below 4% salt so fish meal they are sold as powder and mainly this fish meal it goes uh, to the animal feed industry and it is given as feeds and these are the residues uh, after removing the liquor that is the pressed liquor pressed liquor is also called stick liquor and the stick liquor it is rich in fish oil and the cakes they are dried and powdered or they can be uh, stored as such 
and after separating the oil the stick water it contains uh, high amounts of fish solubles that is water soluble uh, components it can also be concentrated and sold into the various forms and drying of cake can be done uh, by subjecting it to direct sun drying or you can do use uh, mechanical dryers if you are going for mechanical dryers the temperature has to be maintained between 100 to 1, 500 degrees centigrade and most of the time at higher temperatures most of the biotic components are lost so next value added product is icing glass or fish moss actually uh, icing glass and fish moss they are very common or very, uh, considered as a delicacy in china these are made from the air bladders or swim bladders of fish so generally we uh, discard these things as waste so these are collected cleaned and dried after drying these are called fish moss so this fish moss they contain 15 percent moisture content and the same fish moss we can use for refining and we can convert it into icing glass when it is converted to icing glass it is cut into small ribbons compressed the compression can be done by passing it through rollers and this compressed material is called icing glass which are cut into small tubules like structure which has a thickness of 0.4 millimeter and these are used to develop soups and stews so it is a delicacy and uh, mainly these are this consists of collagen in in beer industry it is used for clarification it helps in removing the suspended particles in the beer and uh, so it is also very important for the beer industry also this can be converted to glue uh, fish glue uh, water resistant fish glue uh, because collagen it is converted to gelatin on heating so it can be de developed into glues and uh, coming to the byproducts that are discarded from the canning industry they produce immense amount of wastages it can be in the form of heads or fins or other gut regions that can be used to extract oil we can also treat them with urea and once it is treated with uh, urea the liquid fraction can be used to extract uh, omega-3 fatty acid esters and uh, the solid portion they can be converted to biodiesel so these are the two byproducts that can be produced from the byproducts of canning industry and the biodiesel which is produced by this method they have almost same composition as commercial diesel and uh, again this waste products they can also be used to produce biogas by anaerobic degradation the other products which are produced from the industry can be pearl essence pearl essence is used to uh, get artificial pearls so this is a crystalline material which uh, crystalline guanine in water or in organic solvent chemically it is 2 amino 6 oxypyrene and uh, this is a purine base and it gives a glow of real pearl so the beads can be coated with the pearl essence to get a artificial pearl and other products like fish pickle uh, gelatin glue fish cake uh, salads, flakes, wafers, uh, bones of shark and other shellfishes they can be used to develop ornaments and other other products so these are some of the other byproducts that can be produced from the industry and a very common evolving uh, thing we have seen is fish leather uh, the leather from the salmons, basa, carp or perch can be processed and converted to fish leather just like the animal leather actually fish leather can replace the animal leather and can be used to develop watch straps, bells, purses and it can also be used to in developing shoes and other things. So these are the other set of byproducts and again uh, scientists are working on extracting enzymes from the seafood industry and uh, we all know enzymes they are important in a living system and they catalyze several chemical reactions and fish being poikilothermal uh, animals they can adapt to the cold uh, conditions and the enzymes are designed in such a way that they can survive and they can adapt to the environmental stresses in the cold conditions so such enzymes they can be extracted out and they can be utilized positively so studies are also going out in that direction also it contains uh, endogenous uh, enzymes or autolytic enzymes which are mainly responsible for the loss of quality in seafood but then we can use these enzymes for some other purpose for degrading proteins in other areas so therefore uh, seafood enzymes also play a very important role and uh, scientists have reported that goldfish and shrimp they contain uh, high amounts of carotene uh, and it, uh, different types of carotenes are present it, we also find xanthophylls astaxanthin and this can be ex extracted from the shrimps the enzymes can be extracted and they can be utilized to the, for the synthesis of astaxanthin and astaxanthin is known for its immunomodulating effects 
Then we have also seen uh, reports are there that some fish they can accumulate inosin and uh, they, these are not converted to hyposanthin. Actually, when once hyposanthin is formed, the product is bitter and it cannot be consumed. So formation of inosin or accumulating inosin in the body is uh, it's an additional advantage. So that can also be studied or explored in detail. Then antioxidant enzymes present in fish contain vary between fish species to species. These are antioxidant enzymes, so they can be extracted out. Uh, we also have cysteine protease in dark muscle. So that is one thing. And then phenolase, thiaminase, kerosinases. These are some of the enzymes that are being uh, studied in detail and can be sold as enzymes in the market. And uh, fish phospholipase is also involved in the synthesis of PUFA or eicosanoids. So that can also be studied in detail. And uh, biogenesis of PUFA, how it is synthesized and 12 and 15 lip lipoxygenases are involved in this process. So those uh, studies are also going on. So in short, the scientists, they are studying, they now the attention has been turned to seafood enzymes because they have been recognized for their multiple functionalities. And what are the merits and demerits of value addition? Merits, of course, it, it has a genuine market demand and we can generate income, it will uh, generate employment in both in the fishermen community or the other sectors of the population. And uh, also we can uh, include some innovations and various uh, innovative products can be or variety of products can be developed. You can add creativity and innovative products can be developed in this method. Also, it will increase the consumer satisfaction and variety of products can be designed. It's not necessary that you have to limit yourself to some particular products. Many things can be tried out and a lot of changes can be brought during value addition. However, the demerits is it is very expensive than the conventional ones. So how the consumer will look into it, whether there will be a demand for such, such a thing, that is also very important. And also non-food value added products, it's okay because they, it is not consumed. But when validation is done to the food products, then quality assurance is very important. It should be very quality, uh, highly safe and hygienic to the human beings. And also skilled personals are required for developing value addition or doing value addition. And also it's a time consuming process. So these are the demerits of value addition. To conclude, uh, value addition is a very uh, opportunistic area where you can uh, do a lot of innovations and come up with new ideas and new uh, themes and demands are there, then it will definitely create opportunities for employment. It will also generate a lot of income. So value addition is, uh, is a very interesting topic and uh, it can be taken up with new ideas and researchers. Thank you.